Hi everyone, welcome back to Switch Up and to that episode where we're going to talk about some new and sometimes not new and just interesting games that we've been playing. Nice and succinct that. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? New and sometimes not new. Yeah, games. it flowed off the tongue. It's flowed? It's good, yeah. Is that right? I feel like it should be flu, doesn't it? Flu? Yeah, rather than flowed. It flowed off the tongue. It flew off the tongue. Ooh, now you're not sure. Two different meanings. Completely different. But they both work. Kind of, yeah. In a way. Give you that. What have we been playing anyway? <laughs> Let's find out. First off then, I'm going to talk about a little game called Surmount. Now I did see this because there was a, there was another game on Xbox that I was playing where you essentially just have to climb a mountain. Mm. And it used like real physics, it was lovely, like it, it looked beautiful. Um, and then I, I saw this Surmount game pop up on, I don't know if it was on one of your upcoming videos, or if it was one that was maybe missed, and then I saw it and it stood out because I of that. I think it's the latter, yeah. yeah. And essentially, you, and you can do it in co-op as well, and that would be really good. Unfortunately, and I haven't actually finished that sentence, you and you can do it in co-op as well, have to climb a mountain. A mountain, yep, okay. It's like 2D slash 3D, I don't know if it's 2.5D. You control your little character and you get sent on like errands and stuff and you start climbing this very famous mountain in this little town. But unfortunately, right, mm. so it does that thing where you control the individual limbs. So you kind oh, of like, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, one, they stick on like one of those little things you used to get as a kid that yeah, you throw yeah. against the wall. And then they'd like yeah. flip backwards <laughs> yeah, exactly. down the wall. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly like one of those. Good times. You get them in party bags and You stuff. get them in party bags. Words, yeah. But those little things were a lot less frustrating. Wow, <laughs> oh, no, okay. Yeah. yeah, so you've got that. You, you know, stick, stick, stick. You've got your stamina bar mm. quite quickly going down. Right. And this is where they made the biggest misstep in terms of the whole game. You have to spin your character. So you stick on with one arm, spin them round really fast, and then release to jump to the next area. Okay. What can you see that would be inherently wrong with that choice? I'll be honest, I can't even get my head around what you just said. Okay, so, so you, you have stick to on like stick this. on, yeah. You rotate your whole body, right? So you're swinging your whole body. You're spinning this thing around like this. Oh, well, like a like Wheel of Fortune, like yeah. spinning about. Yeah, 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 with one arm stuck to the wall. Okay. Right, with this timer going down quite quickly. Yeah, you're okay. And then you have to release at the right moment to then jump a gap and stick back on and keep climbing. Right. Can you see an issue with that? I see plenty of issues yeah. with that, to be honest. The biggest yeah. one is you haven't got a bloody clue when which you're going to release, go? which yeah. way you're going to go. Yeah. Nine times out of 10, you go straight back down. That's crazy, why did <laughs> they do that? I, I thought it was going to be like a, a climbing simulator. The way you built it up, no. albeit obviously in a, a 2D view, no? No. So it's like a Catherine wheel going off. Yeah, it's it? exactly like a Catherine wheel going off. What they should have done is have either like a, a function where, in a game we're going to talk about in a minute, there's a button that you can press and it slows everything down. Yeah, well that would make it more would have sense. made a lot of sense. Yeah. You know, just a real slow mo, just for a few seconds, just to, so you can time it right. You know, and yeah, then go, but you can you can never time it right. No, and and you can't do like a side <clears throat> to side and then release. That also would have made some sense. It just leaves it feeling completely random. Plus. When you're trying to build up momentum to spin around your arm, even that sometimes doesn't work. But they, I mean, there's so many... <laughs> if they'd wanted to use that mechanic, mm. the spinning about and then jumping off, why not make it about, I don't know, like climbing through trees in a jungle or something? If you're going to do a, a mountain climbing game, that to me, immediately, you, you think of precision and... Yeah taking your time and that just doesn't fit that at all does it no like if you saw it, it's got this like cartoony aesthetic so they planned on it being like a you know like right. a fun kind of co-op cartoon game okay. where you're swinging around and spinning yourself and that would be really fun right it's very frustrating yeah that does not sound good I and it's a say. shame because everything else about it is really well done you know like that the quirky little like town mission of going up this mountain like the little dialogues it's just done well so i was really like oh yeah it's yeah. gonna be pucker and then the, like, the 15th time I slammed the wrong direction into the ground and was like just staring up at the mountain. It just, <laughs> like I can't get my head around it because you think you go into this town, you're told of you know the mountain, that dominating mountain that has you know, looked to, uh, above the city for so many years. You've got to go and try and climb it and, and conquer it. You hold on with one hand, look up, music goes tense, and then you just spin around really fast and just shoot off into the distance. Like, look at it. Oh yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Okay. It looks like a um, Metopia mixed with a climbing game. It looks it looks actually a bit like a pop-up book. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like that town, the picture of that town. Yeah. A bit of Paper Mario about it in some of those shots. So I wonder if it's others. better in co-op. I just don't think I like the, the mechanic. It sounds a bit no. naff. It's an honest. annoying mechanic. I mean, I've just seen it's got a Metacritic of 66. Shame. So yeah, unfortunately, Surmount for me just hasn't it hasn't tickled me fancy. And the silly thing is it'll be such an easy fix. Mm. Like I reckon a day a day in the dev room, you know, doing a few tweaks and you could have that really addictive. The way it is, it's just frustrating. Yeah, oh, that's a shame, that's a shame. My first one then is um, it's the Jurassic Park Classic Games Collection, which came out, I think it was uh, 
I think it was this year, a few, few months ago, and it's got seven games on it, being the first game, Jurassic Park, for the Super Nintendo, Game Boy, Mega Drive, and mm -hmm. then it's got its sequel again, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, whatever. There's seven games in total. So at the minute, I've only played two. The one I bought it for, for the most part, was the Super Nintendo version of, of that first game, Jurassic Park, because mm. it was so different. The rest of them are um, platformers, yeah. but the Game Boy, Nintendo, and Super Nintendo versions of that first game are these like top-down adventure games, you know? And you play as Alan Grant, and you're making your way about the park and trying to obviously sort out the carnage that's happening, and you need to find other the other characters from the film's um, cars, what do you call it, like um, security passes, yeah. you know? and that will give you access to other buildings. It's actually a, a pretty good game. I mean, I had it as a kid and I, I really didn't appreciate it at the time because I suppose, because it wasn't a platformer. Yeah. I was kind of looking over the fence at the Mega Drive version being a platformer and feeling quite jealous. <laughs> and the other game I've played of it was that Mega Drive one for about half an hour just to see how I felt about it now. And I much prefer the SNES version, you know? Yeah, so I had the Game Boy version. I think I got it for Christmas. Right. And I loved it, like I was like, because I was a massive RPG fan. You yeah. Know, I was playing like a lot of old school RPGs and I, I thought it was amazing to go into that direction. Yeah, and I remember sure. thinking, man, this is difficult. Yeah. You know, like it was a hard, quite a hard it game. Is. The Super Nintendo one's tough, yeah. Although there aren't many games that I think back on that, are, that weren't hard. Yeah. You know, I was like, yeah. wow, these are tough. Yeah, I make you right. Flipping Krusty's Funhouse. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, good game. I, I didn't play this SNES one. I'm guessing it was similar. Actually, no, I say that, tell a lie. I didn't play the SNES one until recently. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming similar. the Game Boy one was like a stripped down version yeah. of, of the, uh, the Super Nintendo one and likewise for the NES as well. Yeah, so you, I mean, the, the biggest flaw it had back in the day was you couldn't save your game. You oh. had to finish it in one sitting. Oh, come on. And I, I mean, as with all games back then, you could, if you were good enough, finish it in I don't know, hour, hour and a half maybe. Yeah. But no one's finishing it no. in an hour, hour and a half. You know, you're, you're talking by the time you've worked out what, what on earth you're doing, mm. you walk in the wrong direction, you get killed by a raptor within five seconds. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're talking six to ten hours, I would I would guess, for most people. On that first playthrough, I mean, the map... No, it didn't. I don't think it had a map back in the day, actually. But it does in this version. You can pull up a menu and it has... What well, I was going to say, sorry, I did what you did and didn't finish my sentence. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can now save it. Right. You can now, you know, save it at any point. So they've added that feature. But they've also in introduced a map, but it's rubbish. Mm. It, it's just like someone's bashed it out in Microsoft Paint. <laughs> they probably have. Yeah, there's no UR here. There's no, you know, uh, yeah. key items indicator. It's just a, a very standard map and it's, it's pretty pointless. It's a shame I didn't flesh that out a bit more. But the game is, is much better than I remember it being. And I liked it back in the day, you know? Hmm. You know what, what are you saying about save states and stuff? You've kind of reminded me, it's got a bit of a tangent here, so yeah. you have to forgive me. Yeah. A lot of the new consoles have um, like, like a pause and resume, like a resume feature. Yes. So even if you're in another game, you switch to something else, you can just resume and it will go straight back to where you played from. Mm -hmm. Like that is, we need that in, in the next Switch, you know? Yes. I think that's, because that's annoying, isn't it? With that kind of game on the Switch, you either leave it running in the background, you know, or you're screwed. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Because when the, when the Switch first came out and you could go back to the home screen, mm. that seemed brilliant, didn't yeah. it? You were like, what, what a good feature that is. But obviously over the preceding seven years, even that's not ideal. Yeah. And as you say, newer consoles since then have made it even better. But yeah, just having that safe feature in this game is such a, a game changer. And um, it's nice to see it's got rewind as well, I mean, mm. which is it's handy, I suppose, if you do go off the beaten path and get, you know, consumed by a T-Rex or whatever. <laughs> but I do like these sort of collections. You know, I've, I've said many a time I'm a big fan of movie games, whether they're good, bad or ugly. But I do think this one is a genuinely good collection of quite different games, you know. There's the sequels, I've, I've never played them, but I've seen them. And I think I'm right in saying, certainly the Super Nintendo one, it does the thing where you, as you're walking through the screen, you can like press up or down to enter the next area. Oh, okay. And your character will kind of walk away or towards the screen. Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of Commodore games used to do it yeah. back in the day. So even that, despite the fact it's still a side on platformer, is quite different, mm. you know? So there's a nice collection of games here, different genres within that same franchise, you know? Absolutely. All right then, yeah. My next one is a game called Monolith. This caught my eye. Again, I don't know if this was on the upcoming games. No, I don't believe it was. I don't believe it was. No, I think I saw, yeah. I don't know where I saw it in, but I saw it and was like, wow, it's a point and click adventure, like well, that sci-fi setting. Mm. And it just, it, it, you know, in the simplest form, the artwork caught my eye and I was like, yeah, that looks decent. I really do love, I mean, that's like another world, isn't it? It's got that yes. kind of like aesthetic to it. It's beautiful. It's got a really good mixture of like 3D and hand painted. There are cutscenes that are fully 3D and I thought the whole game was going to be like that. I was mm. like, oh, okay, this is like quite big budget. And then you get into it and they're decent hand drawings. 
I do hope it's not AI. I'm sure it isn't. You know, yeah. I don't think it is. From, no. from what I can see, it's very stylized and it's kind of got that continuity between each one. Now, the main character. Here's a, there's a couple of things straight off the bat that stood out to me with point and click adventures. Very often. It's a very wooden experience. Yeah. You know, you've got yeah. that character kind of like <laughs> shuffling around in quite a wooden way. No, not many animations. There are a, a, a ton of little animations they've tried to do. Now, some of them are a bit more successful than others. Like you start out the game stuck in this cryo chamber and you've got to get like a piece of glass and cut your way out. But there were just a few little animations that, that made it look a bit better, you know, mm -hmm. as you climb out of your pod and, and then get stuck for the next hour. All right, right, of course, yeah. <laughs> Standard, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I believe it's got around like 50 different areas that you visit, you know, different screens. Yes. And you'd be going backwards and forwards between between those. Now, it's fully voice acted. I don't know if I've already said that. I might have done. Um, have I said it's fully voice acted? Uh, I think you might have done. But yeah, I think I might well have done. Never mind. Say it but, twice. But that's quite... <laughs> say it twice feels so nice. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. It's like reggae reggae sauce. They named it twice because it tastes so nice. Makes perfect sense. You know reggae reggae sauce? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll buy you some for your birthday. <laughs> I don't want to go for peri peri sauce. Oh, I love a peri peri sauce. The peri peri sauce. Yeah. On your chips. Yeah. And there's, like there's an American that. one. What's that other one? Like, oh, what's it called? It's like red sauce. You have it on your buffalo wings. Oh, uh, I don't know. I see as a veggie, I'm not really well versed uh, in buffalo buffalo's wings. wings. I didn't even know <laughs> buffaloes had wings, to be honest. <laughs> Last time I saw one, he weren't flying anywhere. <laughs> oh my god, he's flying straight to my plate. <laughs> anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, computer games. Ah, oh, very good. Yeah, you play as a, a lady called Tessa Carter. Tessa okay. Carter. Yeah. The, the, I was, the reason I mentioned the voice acting again is because it's actually pretty decent. And they've done like lip syncing and stuff, oh, which nice. is just it's a bit unusual. So what, do you get like a, a static image of your character? No, no, you see it on them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, okay. so that's the 3D element, is the right. actual character um, models, yeah. and there's like lip syncing and stuff. Now, obviously, it's the Switch version, you know, some of those look a little bit jank, but I'm, I'm just impressed. There's a few things they've tried to do that you don't often see in an indie or in an indie anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and lip syncing, certainly one of them, full voice acting for the cast, that, that's nice. Nice, rational, logical puzzles. Yeah, I do like that, yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, you need some fluid for the, you know, set fire. Oh, look, there's a leak in a system over there. Mm. Well, that's where I'm going. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yeah, no, exactly right. I mean, I know you like your Monkey Islands yeah, and whatnot. Yeah, of course. But obviously that was quite a whimsical world. It yeah. made sense to have rubber chickens and <laughs> all that caper. But if you're talking about Awaking from cryo chambers mm. and having to get yourself free, and you know, obviously, that serious tone needs serious puzzles almost, doesn't it? It does, and it, I tell you, it gives me those um, white label games vibes back in the day, you know, on PC, you had these white label games, you get your like seventh guest and all yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, here they've used full motion capture, it kind of reminds me of how they used to get actors in to do like the FMVs, yes. yeah. I had the seventh guest oh, on white label. Game. Um, I think we've spoken about Seventh Guest in one of these episodes. Right, okay. Because it was released on the Switch. I bought that and the Eleventh Hour as a double, um, and couldn't get them to run on my computer. I'd never played them until the Seventh Guest was released on the Switch, and I've never played Eleventh Hour. You should have had me as a friend. Yeah, you I would have got out. that working. Yeah, it was annoying. That was. I think that was the first and only time I bought a game for a PC. I was oh like, no! no. Sticking to consoles from now on. <laughs> He's, you're pushing it into the drive, like waiting for that boot screen. Every PC yeah. gamer knows, man. Never, CD never, slash. Never came. Install. He doesn't know what I'm talking about. No. MS DOS. I like the computer to do the work for me. I've got to yeah, be honest. Nah. Put the game in. Press the button, which is quite hard work itself. You know, putting that, <laughs> putting that button down on the old Super Nintendo. <laughs> now your turn, computer. You do the rest, mate. I've done my bit. I bought the game. <laughs> no, 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 no. It didn't work that way on PCs. It did not work that way. So yeah, Monolith. So far, I'm absolutely loving it. I'm only probably about an hour in. I've got stuck on a few puzzles. I will say, controls-wise, there are a couple of things. They've done something really good. And then another thing I'm like, huh? So you use the right analog stick to move the mouse cursor. Okay, yep. The left analog stick doesn't do anything. Straight away I'm like, that's weird. Mm. You know, because naturally I go to use left, but that doesn't matter. What they could have done there is have the left go to normal speed and the sorry, sorry the right goes normal speed and the left goes super slow. Yes, which some games do. Which do. some games yeah. do for those precise motions. Yeah. I, I, unless I'm missing it, you know, and if I am, I apologize profusely to the developer. I can't see a, a mode to go precisely slow. Right. Having said that, I've been playing in handheld and you can touch screen. Oh, okay. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the touch cursor, when you put your finger on the screen, disappears. And it doesn't seem to do the same as when you're using the cursor with the right stick and you hover over something and it highlights. Yes. When your finger's over something and it doesn't. What they should have done, right? Sorry, developer, but again, it's a pretty easy fix, is have an offset mouse. 
Mm -hmm. So when your finger's on the screen, you can still see the cursor and you're moving it, but you can actually still see it. Yeah, that would make sense, yeah. yeah. Um, it's just little things like that, that <laughs> it's like a equally, yes, it's got touch sensitivity, but on the, no, it's not quite a good execution. So you have to keep switching between the yeah. two. Yeah, and they could have offered both, couldn't they? They could have had, you know, direct touch. Yeah. Or as you say, offset the cursor slightly. Sorry, just to add one other thing, is they have got gyro control. So if you're just sat on the sofa, it's yeah. great. You know, you just like like the old school, um, bit like the old school, uh, like duck hunt or whatever. You know, you're pointing at the where you want to point. Yeah. So it's like a mouse. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, so you control the cursor yeah. just by point, moving it around. Oh, no, yeah. And then click yeah. the trigger in to choose. It, may, it it works really well. Do you know what? <laughs> I'm struggling with that so much. Because we were talking about handheld, and I still had handheld in mind. Yeah. And I could imagine like waving the switch about on screen yeah. with so, the gyro. Sorry, yeah, when yeah, you're no. docked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When docked, sense. it plays really well. Yeah. It's a great idea. So yeah, I'm enjoying the game. I think it's a great um, point and click. So do play if you're a point and click fan. Just a few tweaks to controls, and it would be uh, a little bit less frustrating at times. Mm. My next one is one that I've recently reviewed. Uh, you should have seen the review by now. Should have gone out a couple of days ago as you're watching this now. And uh, that's Moonstone Island which is quite an interesting concept and, and game. It's a, it's a few different genres kind of merged together. So it's, you, you play as an alchemist or a, a student of alchemy and you're kind of going off to, to become a full alchemist. And it has an element of farm life in there. Yeah. Has um, like monster collecting, you know, your, your Pokemon, for, you know, just for ease to give people an idea what I mean by that. You've got the, the battling with those monsters is actually card based. Oh, okay. It's interesting. Yeah, and it has crafting and foraging and whatnot in there as well. So there's a, quite a few different elements yeah. thrown in the pot, so to speak. And to give it its credit, it actually handles all of those different elements quite well. Mm. You know, and um, funnily enough, like I say that, it's definitely a, a, a plus for the game, don't get me wrong. But sometimes it, I feel it's to its detriment as well, just for me personally. Okay. You know, because some of the elements don't work well together. They've, they've basically tried to give every one of those elements a fair, fair go. So it's like an ensemble of those genres, not one takes the limelight but for example when you're catching the monsters if you or you tame them when you tame them if you don't have any space on you and you have very limited space to begin with you have to send them to the research science center yeah and then you can go there and from there you can add them to your party or you can build a barn using that kind of farm side of the game later on but on some days the research center's shut because in farm life games you go to the town certain shops are shut on certain days now if i want that creature to go and battle i don't want the shop to be shut you know what i mean like they've 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 tried very hard to make sure every one of those genres gets its time to shine yeah but i think some of the parts they should have cut because they don't work well with the other parts jack of all quite good at one uh, no, I wouldn't be that harsh. I think oh, it's, okay. I don't think it's a Very jack of all trades. I think it's, oh. no, I think it's pretty good at all. All right. I just think that some parts they should have realized won't work well with parts from other genres that they're putting in this same game. Yeah. And cut them down a bit. I'm trying to think of a new saying that would work. <laughs> <laughs> good at all. Not amazing at any one. Ah. There you go. It flows off the tongue. Should be a new saying. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't get Jack in there, but no, never mind. No, forget Jack. Poor Jack. He's done for. But it does look nice. It gives me those kind of, um, there's a few different games that it kind of reminds me of. Even like a little bit of Moonlighter in there, a bit of Stardew. There's a lot. I, I must admit this one really caught my eye. Yeah, it's very vibrant, very wholesome, if I can use that word. You're allowed to. Yeah, I think it does have that wholesome vibe to it. Um, again, it just does a few things that I found a bit strange. Like the music is lovely, mm. really very, relaxing and appropriate for the time you're spending with the game but the songs will finish and then you'll have to wait a couple of in-game hours for a new song to start and in that time there's ambient sounds but otherwise you're just left with nothing ah, how long is an in-game hour <sighs> I don't know, I mean, how long's a piece of string? I haven't really measured, to be honest. Oh, but, oh okay. I you know, you you know like what they're 10 like. 10 seconds or like a couple of minutes or like... No, I would say an in-game 10 minutes is probably about 20 seconds. Right, okay. So a couple of hours so, worth. Yeah. Call it, it's about four hours before the music starts back up again. Right. Of no music. It just seems odd. Plunged into silence. Yeah, it's just a bit weird, but... The game itself is, is very good. Like mm. the card battling works well. You um so as you go out into the wild, you you obviously you fight the other creatures. The uh, the cards you have as you level up, you can choose new cards to add to your deck, or you start to discard older cards. It has that system where you have to knock their armor down before you can do damage. Okay, yeah. But again, you do that via the cards, and you you'll get stronger cards that can do that quicker as you go through. It's got dungeons that you can explore. It's got there are one hundred islands around 
your main hub wow. right? and they're procedurally generated but like the first time you play the game it generates that land for you that's cool and once it's done it's done do you know what i mean so it's not like every time you go to play it changes it, it doesn't do that but you'll find the other dungeons scattered about these 100 islands and eventually mm. you can relocate to somewhere else each island has like a different type so you have like electric type creatures living on certain islands water type and you can tame them and, and add them to your team it's just a very Sounds good game. great <laughs> it does sound very great game. It just uh, it just has a, little, a couple of little quirks yeah. that I feel hold it back from being genuinely exceptional, mm. but it's still very good. You know what? A lot of these types of games start like that, you know, and our reviews reflect that. They're kind of just below like great yes. Yeah. And actually, a lot of these games then have patches and updates, and you come back a few years later when I do my old patched up, and I'm like, it has gone into that category now, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that music one alone. Some people might like that. They might like a, a bit of time with just ambience. Mm. For me, it just felt a bit jarring. Yeah. But, you know, add a couple of points on for music and all of a sudden it's starting to look a lot better score-wise. But it's still very good. And um, all I would say is I think you have to really enjoy all of the genres included mm -hmm. to get the most out of it. I'm not a big fan of crafting in games. I can take it or leave it. So every time I had to craft, it kind of felt like a chore. You know, like you have to craft a magic table to, be able, yeah. Yeah, to be able to craft a barn yeah. to be able to put the creatures in, but then you need a stable for each individual animal or creature to be able to house them. All that, I just want to go and catch a few more creatures. You know what I mean? It started to slow the thing down for me, but that is very subjective. It, yeah. That yeah. part is very subjective. <laughs> in Glenn's game that he's going to release, like there's a screw fix on the corner. You just walk down, you're like, I need everything. Yeah, brilliant. You walk up and make it. Yeah, pretty much. And there's much. a place where you can stop for a cup of tea. And I wouldn't have, bought, I would have got home delivery. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A little van comes out and these two people come out and they like drop it on the floor, they're making noise, they're asking for, for, for a drink. Yeah. They take ages, they ask for a tip. If one in-game day was them delivering it, yeah. yeah, giving them a cup of tea and whatnot, you know, having a bit of chit-chat, they, they build it for you and then you go to sleep next, next game day. Do you know what? We really could make a good game. Like I know we're, we're joking there. Right. But actually, why not? Why not have a game that had a lot of these like real world mechanics? Like one of the games we're going to talk about is very down to earth, like in some of its mechanics. Yeah, yeah. And actually, they're fun. The, yeah, the little, like, little, yeah. you know, they get off the van, you're having a chin wag. You, some of the dialogue choices can affect something, I don't know. The how, quality how, of yeah, the thing. How good the barn is when they built it, yeah, yeah. Like these little things could actually make for a good game. Yeah. And if the music cut out whilst I was having yeah. a chat, I wouldn't mind it. No, wouldn't have even noticed. No, it'd probably be them with the radio. Exactly. It's run, out, it's run out of batteries or something. Yeah, well, they've been asked to turn it down for a minute because yeah. it's a bit loud. You know, you've got to go sort of I know you're working and that. I don't want to be a killjoy, but you can just turn it down a bit. <laughs> I'm trying to work in here. Yeah, sorry, Garth. <laughs> turn it down. Man. It can, yeah, all right. Okay, well, keep that in your mind. <laughs> keep that in your mind. Coming to a game near you exactly. soon. Exactly. What would it be called? <sighs> Britannia. <laughs> 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 That's all I can think of. Anyway, all right. So my next one, I like that. That sounds amazing, I must admit. I, I wish it had multiplayer. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that would have been good. Yeah, just because everything that I play now, my daughter's like, can I play? And sometimes I'm like, well, actually, no, you can't. <laughs> you, you can look at the screen if you want. <laughs> and not talk. And they, yeah, in silence. <laughs> and making me a cup of tea. Um, next one is uh, a game called Fading Afternoon, which straight away, the, uh, the aficionados of good games are going to go that looks a bit like Ringo and uh, it is it's from the same guy for me I'm not that sophisticated I saw it and was like that looks a bit like a 2D Shenmue <laughs> which is what Ringo Ishikawa was called too exactly yeah yeah Fading Afternoon takes things to uh, it feels a bit like uh, Ringo meets uh, the Yakuza series, if you've played those. Uh, I've played one of them, yes. Yeah, it feels yeah. a bit like that. You play as a guy who's just got out of prison, which seems to be the standard kind of start of these games. Mm. The thing with this is there's a, there's a very big drive behind the scenes going on that I'm not going to spoil, and it plays into the experience, but you have complete freedom. So it's not like I can say, oh, the storyline is this. Mm. The storyline is you, you got out of prison and you're part of this... Um, what do you call them? Like the individual factions. Factions. Faction will do it. Yeah, think, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're or, part of a <laughs> yeah, or, like, or like a family, isn't it? Yeah, families, family, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You're part yeah. of one of the, the families or you work for them. You've got um, a, a world map. And I will say before I say that, is you're kind of walking around at this lethargic place. Mm. It's not like one of those rushing games, you know. This isn't one where you're like, right, I need to get to this point and do this and rush and do this. Yeah. You've got a day which allows you to go to three different locations. You know, you access those via the, the map and you travel around on the subway. And basically, the different factions or families or clans, whatever they're called, 
will have, be wearing a different colour. So, so you might be walking down the street and you'll see a group of greens. Right. You start a fight with them. Yeah. You know, and then that will unlock a storyline. Next time you play through the game, you might go a different way to mm. a different location and that will unlock a different storyline. But there's also choice within that. You hear this a lot, you know, there's choice in this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This genuinely has choice. Like the, the, the leader will be like, hey, look, we want you to go to this place, um, do this. You can completely ignore it. If you ignore it, it'll take you down another route. If you do it, you end up going there, having this massive brawl. And although I probably haven't said it yet, most of the combat, most of the game, sorry, is combat. Right. It's like a, it's beat, like a up. beat em up. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't want to say that too heavily because that's not what the game feels like. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. I, I, I see what you mean by that. It's yeah. like, a, like a thinking man's fighting game. Thinking man's fighting game. That could be a part of our Britannia game. <laughs> <laughs> Like when someone winds you up, you know, the delivery man, he just like throws your parcel and you're hardooking him out the door. Yeah, what could happen is it could like shoot to your your mind yeah. and it could have that moment, you know, before the red mist descends. Exactly. And you have to make that choice. Yeah. And it dictates whether you do the hardooking in or, or don't do the hardooking yeah, in. No, you can't take a photo of me. <laughs> take a photo of yourself. <laughs> Why do they do that now? I don't think they take a picture of you, did they? Well, they I don't know. Parcel. I don't know. It was like he'd lay down, hands under your chin. Was he? A bit, yeah. a bit like this. Yeah. <laughs> Sprawled across the chair. Something like that. Do you want to check? Do you want to do light reading? <laughs> no, I think it'll be fine. <laughs> take another. <laughs> but yeah, this one, uh, Fade Up. best profile. <laughs> do you want this side as well? Shall I? <laughs> He's like slowly trying to edge your way. <laughs> yeah. Take <Shall> another. <laughs> Shall I unbutton a couple of. Just a bit of. Fantastic. No? <laughs> Fantastic. So anyway, Faded Afternoon. <laughs> it, it follows that kind of flow. You know, there, there are little activities in there. I actually took some notes, which I never do, but I thought it was interesting enough that I wanted to make sure I covered specific points this mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So bear with me. It's basically what I've just said. <laughs> <laughs> put the notebook back in yeah, his pocket. The <laughs> no, there, there are like you do have other choice in the in the in the minutiae as well. Things like sleeping. Yeah. It's not like you have to go back to your set apartment. Mm -hmm. You could fall asleep on a park bench and that'll okay. have implications. You could hire a hotel. Um, things like that. Uh, the combat is a lot more detailed than you might think. Like you hold a button for like a counter move and stuff like that. And yeah. then there are different combos. I think you'd really like that side of it. Mm. I think there's something called like a rumble mode. Now I didn't try this out. I think it's where you can like just just fight. Oh, just cut the rest out. Yeah, yeah, cut yeah, all yeah. the other stuff yeah, yeah. out. But it's it's the amount of detail they've got in as well. If you've played Ringo, which I, I've seen a little bit of and played a little bit of, it feels like the character uses all the same animations, and I'm sure they probably do. Right. So it almost feels like a sequel when yeah, you're playing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so far I'm really enjoying it. But you have to know that it's a lot slower paced to the point of being a little lethargic at times but that's that's intrinsic to the design and it has this cracking soundtrack that you heard i did yeah yeah it sounded uh, well the very beginning of it as you got out of prison sounded like hotel california <laughs> it did by the uh, was it the eagles i think yeah that one. good song yeah no very good song hank marvin wasn't it <laughs> yeah 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 feeling quite hank marvin now actually yeah that's all i heard when you said hank marvin <laughs> my brain was like food. starving starving yeah. starving disappointing they're so confused now, the listeners. But you always have one person who translates the uh, the rhyming slang. I don't think that one needs a lot of translators. Don't you? You go to an American, Hank Marvin. Oh well, yeah, they'd think of the guitarist. Yeah, of course they would. But in the context of I'm feeling quite now, I suppose. Yeah, no, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what I'm trying. Yeah, fair enough. It means you're hungry. Very hungry. Starving, um, in fact. Starving, yeah. <laughs> Hence the rhyming slang. <laughs> So yeah, that's a fading afternoon. Good game. Nice. Good stuff. Right, my last one is one we played together the other week uh, for a co-op sesh, mm -hmm. and that was Sniper Elite 4. This is a, a very, very good game. From yeah. Rebellion. It's yes. using their, their X-Ray engine. Like You can do the whole thing in co-op, which is unusual for Switch, isn't it? Yeah, and but is the case with most of these. Yeah isn't it, if not all of mm -hmm. these games. Because um, there's quite a few on, on the Switch. I don't know if the whole series is on there. Mm, you've got two, three, and four. I two, think. three, and four, and you've got a couple of the spin-off zombie yeah. ones uh, yeah. as well. And uh, yeah, just very good shooters, third-person shooters. This one especially seems much more open world, I suppose, than the previous ones. I, I seem to remember them being a bit more linear. Yeah. Maybe I'm misremembering, but this one, obviously you're given your objectives, you're plonked down in, I think it was Italy, we were we were in Italy, weren't we? In like a you know a small uh, small town, and you had to obviously the, the ultimate aim was to kill this general mm. in this castle. But there's a long way to go before yeah, that. There is, and yeah. you, you know how you get there is kind of almost up to you to a small degree, and that really changes because we had a few times where we died and had to rethink our tactics. Yeah, and you can save quite often as well, which is nice, can't you? Just to make sure you don't go you know too far down you know the brown river without a popsicle stick, <laughs> that sort of thing. 
<laughs> yeah, this game's amazing. Like honestly, I feel like it's one of the most. Actually, when you think about the the things that we did in our play session, yeah, it feels like when they were like announcing next gen and like back in the day, day, you yeah, know, yeah, when yeah. you were came from your PlayStation twos and whatnot, like. For example, it's so, um, I forget the word and it annoys me because it really would be a good word for it, where mm. things just happen. Emergent, it's got that real emergent gameplay, you know, we, we were making our way around to the left hand side, like Glenn says, you can whack save whenever you want, it's like yeah. instant, and yeah. the reload for co-op, like instant reload, it's, it's great. And, and then like a tank came down, and, and I'm, I'm thinking, hang on, hey, this isn't great. But you notice that you could use your binoculars, see a weakness on it, and you mm. started to like, you shot the driver out, yes. and then some other parts, didn't you? Yeah, you do, and um, obviously it has that X-ray kill. Hmm. I think you mentioned that already. Um, and, and you know, in, in all its glory, when you you take the enemies out. But yeah, being able to spot things like that and not have to, you know, brute force past yeah. a point. I don't think you, you could even brute force it to be honest. You get annihilated. But <laughs> yeah, having that angle to it and the way that we kind of flanked yeah. the enemies without even really discussing it, we just you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly right professionals <laughs> that's how, how we played it and you had one of us causing a distraction and the other just picking them off from yeah. distance and things like that very clever gameplay and um, I mean I, I think this plays very well on the switch to be honest I don't think there were I don't remember any real issues with it at all do you No, no, it plays it plays brilliantly in terms of performance and things like that there was another cool section that I just I love it when you play a game so it's not always the case we play a lot of games mm. sometimes it's a bit like meh you know and other times you have these like memories of it yeah so we rocked up to this massive car yeah, and there were thousands of them, weren't yeah. there, on yeah. the stairs? Like just thousands. You know, when like you look on your mini map, you're like, holy crap! Yeah, and they're coming towards you. They're coming yeah, towards yeah, you. Yeah. They're gradually making their way. I love, yeah. you know, a lot of games. They'd give you like a machine gun, and you'd shoot them it, all. It'd down, become a set you know? piece. It'd yeah, be a set yeah, piece. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Like you'd Call of Duty your way through it. Yeah. Here we crept into a side house. Managed to get underground, didn't we? Found like an, an aqueduct, or whatever you call it, viaduct, something like that. And we crept under the castle and popped up inside behind them. Yes, we did. It yeah. was quality. Yeah, it was really good. It was like that moment in Aliens when they got the scanner on. <laughs> yeah. And then the beeps are coming, you know, and um, you look up and there they are. But we kind of circumnavigate that by being amazing. Yeah, basically. Pretty much. And uh, and then we kind of went into the depths of the castle mm -hmm. and, and again, they were following us and we were picking them off. But yeah, I, I would highly recommend yeah. these games. I would say this one is a bit slower maybe than the mm. other games. Not in terms of, it's still stealth obviously. Yeah. They're all the same in that respect, but just because it's, it's larger, it's more open world. Um, it does, I don't know, feel a bit more slow. Yeah. Than the other games where you're being shepherded towards the next part all the time. And if you if you if it's the pace that's the issue, then the zombie spin-off games mm. eradicate that completely. You're just it's constant. Yeah. Shoot, 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 move, 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 isn't it? You know? Absolutely, yeah. For, for my personal preference, it's definitely this style and the fact that you can save whenever you want and then yes. leave the game and come back whenever you want. It I, works. I like the fact they're so different mm. because I completed the Zombie Army trilogy, so obviously the, the three games on there. And the other ones, it's on beyond. We completed four, one of them together, didn't four, we? We did four yeah. together, and they're great. And uh, but playing this feels so different. Yeah. You could easily, you know, finish that one off and then start this one straight up mm. and not feel any repetition at all. No, absolutely. I tell you, one other cool thing is when you're looking at people in your binoculars, it gives you a little bit of their backstory. Oh, it does. Yeah. It's like Hans has just had two kids, and then all of a sudden you don't want to shoot him. Yeah, you have that pang of yeah. remorse or, or that, yeah, it changes your perception of what to do next whether to to take them out or try and sneak past them and not for everyone I'm sure no. but it's, it is a clever little touch yeah yeah good game good game so that's six games uh, quite a few new ones there actually Absolutely, I don't think yeah. I'd heard of most of the ones you you mentioned well I'm a man of you know I don't know what I want to say <laughs> <laughs> man of browsing the eShop yeah. <laughs> yeah why not why not why not don't forget if you are looking to uh, to pick any of these up you can get your eShop cards via our website switchup.gg doing so will get you 5% of your purchase price back in, in cash back that you can use against a future purchase and there's other links down there to play Asia and whatnot all sorts of goodies down there with discount codes and if you've played any games that you deem interesting please do let us know about them in the comment section a quick thank you to our patrons and our channel members for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos take care until next time happy gaming